Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 9, Lesson 1 on post-war rebuilding efforts. I'm Mr. Penka. And I'm the other guy. The mnemonic here is FORGET, as in after World War II. What? What is it? I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. FORGET. Yeah. We don't want to forget all the things that happened in World War II. We want to remember how painful it was, uh, the lessons learned. And so the lesson here is after the war, we don't want to forget what happened. And in this one, we, uh, we have some nice lettering here that we, we put some thought into what's in that letter. And so we're going to show you that. Here's the F. Yeah, it's supposed lots to of money there in the you. F. Yeah, lots of money. Are those ones, fives, tens? Whatever. It's all about the Benjamins. So here's a map of the Marshall Plan. And uh, you'll notice that there's some big, giant dollar signs stacked up on certain countries in Europe. Iceland kind of got ripped off. Yeah, well, there they are. But you know they didn't help a whole lot. No. So if you look at this, you can see a pattern of the Western European countries are the ones getting uh, aid in the millions of dollars. And we didn't help the other ones because... We couldn't? Why? Uh, we'll get to that in the, uh, the E, okay. but those are the, that's the land taken over by the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union is defeating the Germany... Little, the little ones on the right, on yes. the east. Your, your Polans, your Czechoslovakias, your Romanians. Yeah. Those are the countries that uh, are... Your Turkeys. Your Turkeys, your Ottomans Empire. Mm -hmm. So those are the lands taken over by the Soviet Union. So we're giving the land uh, not taken over by the Soviet Union money as an incentive to not join up with communist countries, to not go the way of communist countries. But anyway, so... Financial aid from the United States to rebuild Europe. The U.S. instituted George C. Marshall's plan, known as the Marshall Plan. Wow. What are the odds of that? See, if you had a plan, you could name it up to yourself. So he made a plan, called it up himself. It provided massive financial aid to rebuild European economies and prevent the spread of communism. And George C. Marshall lived in Leesburg in that big yellow house by Mom's apple pie. That's right. Is there a statue of him? Probably somewhere. Okay. Okay. So the Marshall Plan, it's uh, for the European countries in the West, this is uh, a big thing for them. They're very grateful of for what they, well, maybe some of them are grateful. Yeah. But that they was to stop them. communism because people who are poor and in, uh, in ruin are more likely to support communism. Or any kind of weird ideas. Right. Oh. 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 Okay. So in the O here, the. Uh, we have the Japanese flag surrounded by the American flag, which kind of shows that we are uh, occupying them. And into the same colors. Yeah, they, they go well together. On the right there, you see the uh, map of Japan partitioned into, uh, I guess, zones. So partitioned is like broken up. Yeah, into parts. Yeah. Like the partition in the, the uh, auditorium. auditorium. Yeah. So the United States, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and China are all working to repair Japan. It's almost like Japan has been brainwashed a little bit and they're gonna occupy them and there we go. So the occupation of Japan. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. There's my little stick figure riding, riding it. Riding yeah. the Japanese dragon. Occupation of Japan by American forces. Uh, Japan soon adopted a democratic form of government. Resumed like us. Like us. And by the way, I'm let me pause right here and just say we're kind of color coding these. So those of you who are using pencil, it'll help you to do some color coding right now. Get that blue pen, red pen out, blue highlighter, red highlighter out. So I'm using blue when I'm talking about democratic and capitalist countries. So that And might red. And red for the communist countries. That's all they really need to know. Okay. Well, in this case, it's blue. It soon adopted a democratic form of government, resumed self-government, and became a strong ally of the United States. So the country that we had dropped two atomic bombs on uh, so many decades ago is now a strong trading partner. The R. That R there, you can see the destroyed building. Uh, you see up the top a picture of uh, Warsaw, Poland. In the bottom, you see the uh, a building in Stalingrad in the Soviet Union. Ruins, 
as in Europe, was in ruins following World War II. The United States felt it was in its best interest to help rebuild Europe. And so you could underline rebuild for the ruins, too. Yes. Rebuild. Uh, the United States felt it was in its interest to help rebuild Europe and prevent political and economic instability. So they kind of learned the lessons from World War I. If it's broken, if you fix it, then it won't, uh, it won't come back to haunt you. And the G there, we see a little picture of people on the western side of the Berlin Wall looking at the eastern side of Berlin. So the little east-west divide is what we're talking about with the G. You see the top there, map, just like Japan, Germany is being divided up into zones with the Soviet Union taking the, the right, the eastern side. The red. And the uh, Britain, France, England, Belgium. Britain, France, Britain and England? Sorry, United States. So they're dividing up Germany into zones and helping to fix it, like Japan. Only this time, the uh, I have a little picture there of the movie, like the game Operation, and we have four doctors trying to fix the patient, and the doctor on the eastern side of the patient thinks it would be best just to uh, cut the patient in half and then cut the heart in half. Yeah, he's got a mean face on him. Yeah, he's a mean doctor. Mean doctor. He's Much got a scalpel in his hand. That doctor would be the Soviet Union, because their idea of a repaired and fixed Germany would be a Germany that is communist. So Germany was partitioned, which means cut up into little pieces. Into parts. Was partitioned into East Red and West Germany. West Germany became democratic and resumed self-government after a few years of American, British, and French occupation. East Germany remained under the domination of the Soviet Union and did not adopt democratic institutions. So one country divided into east and western sides. And throughout this, uh, the next two chapters, it'll be useful to kind of keep the east and west uh, separate in your head and, and uh, north and south as well. You know, this is going to be dated whenever I say this, but we just had the Olympics and growing up, I can always remember competing against the East and West German teams, and now it's just Germany. And you always rooted against East Germany because you knew they were communist, and you always rooted for West Germany. But next year, in 10 years, when they hear this, this uh, recording. Olympics? What are those? Yeah, they won't even know what Olympics are. E. So inside the E is a cartoon of the Iron Curtain, a phrase uh, coined by uh, Churchill. Yeah, and we see the it's not a literal not a literal curtain, but it divides the eastern and western parts of Europe. Yeah, it's imaginary. Can't touch it. But although the Berlin Wall kind of conveys the same idea. Well, it's actually not just Germany too. It's the whole right. This is, Europe. This is, is the Iron Curtain. What's idea. happening in in Germany is also happening to Europe. What's happening to Berlin is also happening to all of Europe. And so that map that we see there where we have uh, Germany, Czechoslovakia, uh, Republic of Hungary, Yugoslavia, those countries all fall under the control of the, the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union itself is the uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, which... And Russia. Not to date us too soon, Except. but uh, Ukraine is in the news right now. Because, well, anyway. It's tough. Eastern and Central Europe were occupied by the Soviet Union and the eastern portion of Germany. So whatever the Soviet Union took from Hitler, they kept as they're pushing back the Germans in World War II. Whatever they, they are occupying, they keep. And lastly, the T. Inside the T, we see a picture of the building, the United Nations. There we see a photo of the UN General Assembly and then another photo of the UN Security Council, the more elite uh, group within... So why the T? Why is it a T? Yeah. It stands for the... Oh. T stands the. for the... This is the weaker part of the mnemonic. But, uh, <laughs> the United Nations was established near the end of World War II to create a body for the nations of the world to try to prevent future global wars. So this should be very similar to what you heard about in League of Nations, only this time... Did we join? Yep. We joined it. Did the Russians join? Yep. So Germany joined? Yep. So this is a uh, League of Nations 2.0.
called the United Nations. The United Nations failed. Didn't join. What? I'm sorry, nothing. Cleveland, Cleveland didn't join this time, though. No. No. Okay. So this is why it worked. So, that's the lesson. Don't forget, write down two questions, things that didn't make sense to you, things you're uh, curious about. Write down two questions and some opinion. Maybe you don't like the United Nations. And, you know, or Cleveland. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.